What's up, dude? What up? What up? Let me get let me get nice and comfy. It's been a minute since I've been on the. Should are we allowed should, to? Do I this? think we should do like a ver, like a not a virtual like air air fist. Yeah, that's fair. Especially yeah. with what's going on right now. Yeah. Man. So should we just to make it feel like it was finished? At the same time. All right, ready? Yeah, we See, got that's it. That's nice. We got it. Yeah, that feels the same as a it handshake. feels right. It feels great. Yeah, we stopped entirely handshakes at work. Not doing any of that. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure you guys have finished on hand sanitizer too, and mm-hmm. all that. Every ten minutes, I feel like anytime I touch something, or even anytime I don't even feel clean. Like I'm thinking of it way more often yeah. than I should be, but it's good. I have to start thinking that way. Yeah. But definitely, man, we're uh, we're doing we're going through a tough time. It's a time of uncertainty, you know. Things are uncertain. People are getting laid off. You know, people are panicking, buying toilet paper at the <laughs> grocery stores. Yeah. People are just clearing out the shelves, right? It's uh, it's an uncertain time. It's uh, yeah. I still believe in the fact that people should still get bidets. Uh, if you've been keeping up with my <laughs> Insta be, stories. You should definitely be their brand ambassador. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm waiting for a reply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know what bidets are, they pretty much are. The, it's like this super soaker that just cleans everything that needs to be cleaned. Down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no more toilet paper required for that. No so, more. Okay. And, uh, you know, now that my hours have been cut in half at work, I'm strongly waiting for a response to become an account executive for the largest bidet company. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they respond, man. I think the email, the DM you sent was really nice. I enjoyed it. <laughs> when this episode goes live, we'll have to share that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe we can put it even in the episode. Ooh. Screenshot it to me. I'll put it that. in the episode. Man, those edit effects you got. I'm telling you. <laughs> I want to obviously start off with the issue at hand that we're trying to solve. And uh, by we, I mean us really focusing in on a a particular subject matter that I find you and me are are trying to do our best to figure out day by day. It seems like every single day that goes by is just a brand new way of, of having to handle things that we weren't used to before. And it's really like, how are we coping with self isolation? You know, what are some of the things that we're doing right now to just keep us mentally stable, to keep us going, to still keep us even motivated? Mm -hmm. And I just want to know, I mean, from your standpoint, Omid, Cassius, what are some of the things you've noticed that you're ensuring you're doing still, even though a lot of things have changed for you lately? Yeah, I mean, just kind of going back, um, you know before this episode airs, I mean, I got laid off last week and, uh, wasn't due actually to the pandemic or anything. It was, it was due to another reason and, uh, you know, a factor of the podcast and things like that. But, um, now it's like, I flipped the switch and doing, you know, I was doing client work. I was doing work, you know, nine to five, still doing videos, uh, obviously, but, uh, now I have all this time. And I've never had this much time spent with family, never had this much time to on my own uh, for a couple of years now. So um, I guess the thing for me is, is I like to, I, I like, I like the self isolation. Um, I like to be in my thoughts, but more so it's, it's more so I get this time to allow ideas to cultivate in my brain right? All this create creative work that we do. It's nice because now it gives me enough time and space to allow those ideas to cultivate. So I know a lot of people struggle with, you know, you know, being isolated and, you know, a lot of people want to go out and about and do their regular routine, but I think it's actually beneficial, um, sometimes to, you know, take a step back out of your daily routine and be able to self reflect, and become self-aware of your daily routine that now has been flipped flipped over right so for me it's actually been yes the transition is scary um you know not having a job is scary not having my daily routine is scary and it it can it can spiral into being like not as productive uh not uh, doing what you normally do but i feel like if if you can take the time to 
to, to again i said this in many episodes but taking the time to to self-reflect think about what you're doing where you're going be creative in these times right these times where you can't work outside and in your normal routine well what else can you do how else can you provide the services that you're providing how else can you fill your time with and still be fulfilled like you were when you were going out in, in, in normal and it takes a, a little bit of creativity it takes a little bit of hard work to just sit and think about those ideas so um as much as i'm anxious as much as there's a big question mark in the next coming weeks for myself and for a lot of people listening uh, i think it's also good i think there's 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 ways we can we can turn that um, the chaos of life because ca- life will always give you chaos where everything's always uncertain but uh, this time maybe this is a chance to kind of step back and 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 reflect oh absolutely man yeah i i know one of the two biggest things i found i was always trying to chase is at a time when things felt like it was routine before all this changes happen was oh i always wish i had more time to spend with my family or or more time to call guggen or i always wish i just had more time in general to do other things to focus on the podcast to learn you know i love learning to feel like i can focus on myself instead of chasing all these different things that just felt so routine that i was doing on a day-to-day basis now as sad as the time this is is is, is that many deaths that have been happening and as hard as the people in the healthcare system have been working for those of us right now who are doing our part to social distance ourselves to isolate ourselves and stay put we are sitting on this pot of gold because now guess what we do have time we do have the ability to be with our family way more than we ever have before and it's an opportunity for us to leverage that and actually not look at it negatively and go oh now i have to be with my family 24/7 like i've heard that even in my workplace where there's people who don't even want to see their family that often and i get it i think in general it's it's human nature in relationships with your family with friends you don't want to be with them 24/7 right there's times where you're like okay i can i feel like i want to hang out with my friends or i feel like i want to be with my family for me i'm learning that okay now that i'm more in my household and you know that's already tough for me to do and i could explain that later is now i have to look at it as an opportunity i i have to tell myself okay well there will be more time spent with family and during the day if there's times where i need to be with myself i'll do it i'll find a space in my household i'll communicate that with my family well find periods of time where we're willing to be together. And there's other times where it's time to okay, invest in myself. What do I want to do with this obvious extra time that I have? And that's where I've noticed myself strongly focusing in on, you know, certain things I wanted to do, which is is revamp my knowledge in nutrition and fitness, and I'm doing a specific certification in that. It's actually something I wanted to do, Cassius, like a year, year and a half ago. I put it to the side. Funny how time works. Before all this craziness has happened, I signed mm. up for it again mm. because they revamped the program. Yeah. But then now with this all happening, I'm confined to my own household. Perfect. I have time to do it now. And the other thing about time where I felt like I never had, now that there's more time I have, I'm doing yoga. Something I actually love doing. I talked about it with TJ on the podcast where it's just something where I now have a chance to do things that I just put on the bottom of the list. Mhm. Yeah, and I feel like we we tend to do that with stuff that's on our bucket list, right? Because we think we have infinite time. So it's like, okay, I'll do that next year or I'll do that in the summertime or I'll do that in 3 to 6 or 9 months and that time actually never comes. I've heard a lot of friends that, you know, message me and they're like, "Man, I love you doing all these all these things, the podcast and the music and all this." they're like i want to you know i I was always thinking about starting a podcast or i was always thinking about you know making a hip-hop track and it's like yeah man i'm i support you 100 like i would love for you to i'd love to see that you know three months later that after that conversation six months later after that conversation we reconnect again and ask him and like how's that track coming along or how's that podcast coming along and they hadn't even started it 
And we tend to, again, our kind of daily routine, we tend to think we have infinite time and we, we think that, you know, we just keep going and this is the way we go and I'll, I'll get to that bucket list. And I, and I feel like times like these, especially during a pandemic or something that affects the entire world kind of makes you stop in your tracks for a second and be like, whoa, like, whoa, like I just got off autopilot for a second and now I have to think of like, what I got, what do I got to do? And for a lot of people, because they haven't done that before, they don't give themselves time to self-reflect. They don't give themselves time to meditate and think about themselves or think about where they're going enough to be alone, enough to self-isolate that they're very uncomfortable in this in this time period. So my, like, I guess just from reading and, and I, I know for me, I'm not perfect. There's times that I want to go out and do things, but just by reading and, and, and seeing the people that I, that I kind of look up to and see what they're doing. A lot of these guys meditate. A lot of these guys are alone. A lot of these guys understand and are comfortable in their own skin without having other people, family members, but they're comfortable in both realms. And, and that takes practice. It takes, it takes time to take your time out of your day to for yourself. It takes time out of your day to think by yourself and be by yourself. And that's a scary thing again, for a lot of people, but it's something that I think is crucial in life because you're always going to be alone. You're always going to have these moments where family's not going to be there. Friends aren't going to be there. What are you going to do at that time? Are you going to, are you going to be unproductive? Are you going to be, are you going to throw yourself in a, in a bad position? Are you going to be anxious? Are you going to have these emotion emotions of, you know, depression and things like that? Or are you going to say, you know what? Like, okay, I'm in this position. I'm by myself. What are things that I wanted to do for a long time? What are things that were on my bucket list? What are things that I genuinely was interested in, but I, I didn't have time because of work or because of family or because of the daily life. What can I tackle? And I feel like, again, it's just a matter of what, what your purpose is, you know, always reminding yourself where you're headed in, in your overall life and then going back and say, okay, well, what can I do that will still get me ahead? I can still do things, especially in our, in our, in our city. And especially within our positions, like we're, we're young guys and, and people that are, people that are listening to this. If, if they're not in a bad position financially or in certain things, they, you, you, you have that time to just step back for a little bit, even that, even this for a day or two or three, whatever it is to just be like, okay, where am I headed? What am I going to do? And it's crazy because that feeling gets amplified when you now know that laws are potentially being in place. And it's obviously like social nature now for you to almost feel bad to step outside your house. So it, it's now amplified to be even more confused and almost scared to feel like you now have to do all of what you mentioned in one space. Yep. As human beings, I find in today's society, we we love, especially people our age, we love to go out, right? Yeah. We love, hey, home is for home, sleep, eat, maybe watch a little TV. And other than all of that, that's it. I'm going out. I'm going to go see friends. I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm yep. going to go do this, that, this, that. Yep. And that's very much what my life was, yep. as you know it, as we've even talked about beforehand. But now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to turn my home into this ecosystem of multiple different spaces that are going to facilitate certain parts of me that I like. Yeah. Where, for instance, the studio, this already was there, yeah. but again, it's a part of my home that is going to open up the podcast side of myself. This is where I come to do strictly this. But now, more so than ever, the one little room we have where we've sort of, uh, over the past year or two, turned into a fitness studio, I've now been doing my best to do all of my workouts inside of that area. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Some people, they don't even have a mid-size home or a large-size home. They're living in a, an apartment, in a one-bedroom little home. But again, I encourage individuals, even if it's in a corner, if it's just that space where you're saving it for that one thing where you can imagine yourself in the gym can picture yourself that hey you know what if i'm confined to only doing push-ups sit-ups and the one item i have is a dumbbell i'm gonna fucking work that dumbbell 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna think and go on Instagram and go on Google and figure out multiple different things I could do with my own body and this one set. And it's, it's, it's invigorating. It's nice to see that people are actually putting the stuff out there and, and people are being supportive. But again, it's what you're searching. It's, it's what you're gonna tell yourself and what you're gonna use the space for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you bring a great point, man. 50 Cent says a, a really good quote. He says, turn shit into sugar. And that was uh, from a book called uh, The 50th Law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent, for those who want to take a look at it. But in his life, when he was coming up and trying to, uh, you know, write music and trying to live his life, he didn't have anything. He didn't have no, he didn't have a place to live. He didn't have these things. So turning his shitty situation into, into sugar was his whole motto. So the resources you have in front of you, a lot of us have a lot of resources and we don't, we kind of overlook these resources, man. Big time. Right? We kind of, we overlook it because we're like, ah, this isn't, uh, this isn't my ideal situation. This isn't this. And, and you don't think it, all it takes is a little bit of creativity. All it takes is a little bit of revamping of your, of your room or your apartment or, and now you have a corner where you can do your fitness. Now you have a corner where it's a little office. Now you have a corner to do your little podcast, right? You don't need a full-on studio. You don't need a full-on gym to do these things. It's just a matter of, are you willing to do it? And are you willing to turn shit into sugar? And seeing that as an opportunity. And I feel like, um, you know, there's, there's, there, it's all your lens. If you can switch your lens to seeing those things as opportunities. Because even when we start, again, like it, it's, it goes back to what we, we were doing. When we started the podcast, we didn't have this studio. We didn't have the equipment. We didn't have the things that we have it took us two years to get to this point it's the same thing with my music when i started i didn't have the i had a 50 dollar mic i didn't have a studio i had my closet to to help with the with the with the sound it's for soundproofing like was that did that stop me from writing music no did that stop me from doing my creative work no I had a small little room of mine in my bedroom and away I go. And now I set now during this period, I had I have the resources to set a little table up in my room and set a little whiteboard up and, and move things around a little bit to make it a little bit more, you know, I guess convenient in the sense where I can just start and go. You get innovative. You get innovative, man. So I feel like during this time of self-isolation, I feel like people need to get a little bit, use your creative brain a little bit and, and use what you have to your advantage. That's exactly it. That's that last part is exactly what we need to do is if we can see what's in front of us and that's all we have, how can we be satisfied? Yeah, there's it? ways to do it. How can we make ourselves be satisfied with it? Human beings once upon a time didn't even have a cell phone in their hands to entertain themselves, let alone in the 1600s. Let's just use that as an example. When it was a little bit more, you could say, the norm to be with your family be with your tribe and go and hunt get food and come back to your little small pod of people you know and maybe that's just your family of five maybe that's just you and your significant other whoever it is maybe it's just you like who knows but at whatever time in life you're at you accept it and kind of like right now that's what we're doing the only essential need we have is food we're going out we're getting it we're coming back to the pod yeah but when we're coming back. Guess what we have? It goes back to your point. Let's leverage what we have. We have a cell phone. We have the ability to entertain ourselves. We have technology put in place to still speak with other people. Mm -hmm. So it's just flipping the script yeah. and, and, and not going, this sucks. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't watch a movie outside. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't chill with my friends. Well, mm -hmm. hey, what can you do? Yeah. It's just about adapt, you know, the, the whole idea of adapt or die. You know, it's just, it's things chaos. This is the chaos of life. You know, we don't know what else is coming our way, you know, and, and at the end of the day, if you can't adapt to your situation, if you can't be happy with the situation, not happy, but just being okay with your situation and figuring things out, it's just like another problem you got to solve. Okay, I can't go to the gym. What can I do? Do I have a dumbbell? Do I have a band? Do I have a little space in the corner where I can do a thousand push-ups a day? You can still do these things. It takes a little more effort than, you know, having a treadmill. It takes a little more effort than having dumbbells in front of you. Um, it's the same thing with the creative works, man. It's, it's a little bit of creativity. 
you can turn your shit into sugar. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. You work with what you have in front of you right now. You're yeah. building the foundation. Yeah. For then when shit gets normal, because trust me, we'll get back. We will get through this. We need to all be there for one another. We need to be optimistic as much as this fucking sucks yeah. we still need to understand that on a human level we're all going through it that's that's something that we need to keep in mind yeah and, and you know shout out to the people on the front lines of this man shout out to the hospital workers the nurses the doctors the grocery clerks all the people that are um you know working very diligently to save people's lives and you know it's a very serious issue like serious you know virus we have um you know, we can do our part in, in social distancing and, uh, you know, all we can do is support one another and, and, um, and share positive vibes through our platform here, but just people around us, people that we talk to virtually, it's all we can do. hundred percent, man. And I just want to add to those shout outs. I'm really glad you said that. And this episode is absolutely dedicated to everyone whom we mentioned on that front, especially in the healthcare industry. And it also goes to show the media outlets that are out there keeping everyone informed uh, everyone out there who's ensuring that we are aware of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis so we can keep up with the change right because it's been so much at once that we're getting overwhelmed yet they're putting the policies in place to ensure that we know what to stick with yeah and if we kind of end this off with stating any recommendations right it could be what you should do what you think you should do and what yep. one shouldn't do I think we can go a little back and forth Absolutely. on that. Yeah, I, a number one thing I recommend is um, I think we've done a really good job of it where uh, with our friends, we're all <laughs> we're all refusing to even hang out. And I, I vouch that I'll follow with that. It's not going to be easy because you know I'm a social butterfly. But if you're anything like me where you fuel off of hanging out with your friends and you really enjoy your time with them and they're an element of being your family as well, please check out the app House Party actually was uh, recommended by my cousin today. I got to experience it for the first time. Six of us cousins, we got together and all of us were able to be uh, in communication with one another. Oh, cool. And it was all my cousins around the world. So everyone's like, what's it like in Canada? What's it like in Singapore? What's it like in India? Like, it was like world news. Like, and I just encourage anyone up to, I think, 10 people. You can see the face, you can communicate. And it's just a fun way of still hanging out and interacting with your friends. Fun fact, there's also games you can play with your friends on there. So oh, just, cool. just fun ways. We're not sponsored engaged. by House Party. It's uh, just a good tip that <laughs> that Kenny's brought on. So Yes, another potential sponsor next to the bidet company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> any recommendation on your end, brother? Honestly, I don't have anything specific, but I just, I just say, you know, everyone's got to keep their head up uh, in these moments and um, just self-reflect, take this time out to think about you know where you're headed what you're doing um you know take the time to spend with your family and uh and you know the things that you need to take care of take care of them but um take this time to really enjoy being being just with yourself and you know with your family take this time to to kind of look at your life from almost outside of the bubble if you will and um and put you know put some put some strategies in place where you can you can fill your time up with the things that you might have wanted to do, but have been on your bucket list and been sitting there for such a long time. You know, pick up that guitar, learn that guitar, you know, get on that piano, um, maybe try something creative, you know. Um, I find that creativity is, for me, especially when I'm alone, is very fulfilling to me. Um, so for those who haven't done those things that they wanted creatively, I think I highly recommend that this is a good time to do it. And, um, yeah, those are my recommendations. I love that, man. Uh, I would mention another recommendation that I feel like people shouldn't do is people should not consume all of their free time with instilling more fear into themselves through over consuming the news. Yeah. Very, very important. My parents personally, I uh, love doing that, but they're, they love being informed anyway. Uh, but on another note for anyone else, just remember Who's there in the household with you? Again, if you're alone, talk to us, please. Like yeah, I DM I'm, us. I'm big on that. I really know and understand close people in my life who've uh, you know been self isolated just in general because they're either new to a city or uh, they have uh, physical 
problems where they can't go out and i know that sucks so if you're alone going through this please if you need a friend to talk to or you need uh just someone to to lean on reach out to us and even uh if you're listening to this and you have a friend who you know is alone give them a call and just check in see how they're doing uh, this is not fun to do alone and when you're with your family or friends or anyone in your household just remember be there for each other lean on one another uh, one of the greatest things i heard online right now was i forgot where i heard it from i wish i could give them a reference but they were saying, assign certain duties in the household where there's less contact, where there's going to be that one person going to the grocery store. You know, there's going to be that one person handling garbage. There's just, you know, minimizing ways of over contact. One of the saddest stories, man, and I don't mean to end this or even conclude if that's what we're leading to, was hearing, and this is just, again, the severity of it. I want people to understand that this is not a joke. It was a family of like 11 who went out for dinner somewhere in the world and one after one after one passed away four family members just in the span of a week oh yeah i think i heard about and this. it just it shook me man you know when you don't even have time to grieve for one let alone they died for something that was just uncontrollable unforeseen and then the next week the brother dies the next week the sister dies the next the mom dies if we continue to just ensure we follow the rules and we stay level-headed and we just ensure that we're doing our part, we can lessen that and ensure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. You know, so, you know, on, a, on another note, just, you know, keep your chin up yeah. and ensure that you are doing everything in your power to to know that you're making it easier for everyone else out there Mm -hmm. a lot of us can just you know do our part and do our stay home and uh support one another online and hopefully that as these episodes come out um i hope you guys can take some value in it i hope this is entertaining for you guys you guys catch up on previous episodes that you haven't watched the second floor um you know we bring a lot of value and uh you know we're going to continue to be here for you guys and uh yeah shout out to all you guys shout out to our audience thank you for tuning in this is where we talk about how to survive how to thrive and keep the good vibes going in life and business mucho bueno brother all right that's a wrap that's a wrap